you want to turn your idea into an app with Claude Code or any other coding agent, you need a good system to make this work, to make sure you have a working app at the end of it and not just a giant mess of code. Because AI coding agents need structure. They need a solid plan with a lot of detail. Now, if this sounds hard, don't worry, it's not. And I have a simple and powerful framework that I'm gonna show you today. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, if you've been following along, this is part two in my series on AI coding fundamentals. Last week, we covered how to optimize your agent's memory, like Claude MD files and other things like that, and the permissions in your coding agent so that it can keep coding without your input. And today we're gonna to go over a framework to turn your ideas into apps to actually give the coding agent a framework, a system to make this happen. Now I have a prior video where I touch on this framework a little bit, but there've been some updates and some things I've learned since then. I'm gonna share all of that with you guys today. But the gist of this framework is this. It all starts with a PRD, which is a product requirements document. This is the baseline for any AI coding project that you wanna start. This is what we're going to use to create a bunch of useful files that we will take into Claude code or whatever coding agent you guys are using to turn your idea into a working app. Now you might be wondering what is a PRD and how do you create it? It's basically just the scaffolding, the outline of your entire project, everything that you wanna build. This is something that you wanna spend a little bit of time on, but you don't have to draft this or write it yourself. You can prompt Claude, you can prompt ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever AI assistant you want and just basically give it a paragraph or two on the app you wanna build and have it generate a PRD for you. And this is an example of a prompt you might give Claude. This is from my prior video where I just gave it a paragraph about this productivity coach app that I wanted it to build. And within a few minutes, it generated a PRD. Now, why are you generating this PRD? Why not just give this prompt a Claude code or GPT-5 codex, whatever, to actually just go out and build the app? Now, that is generally what most people want to do when they're vibe coding an app or when they're creating an app from an idea they have. They just want to go out and ask Claude code to just build the thing. The problem with doing that is that you're going to get garbage output. It is super fun to one-shot apps for demonstration purposes. And even on this channel, we like to do that when there's new models released. We want to test out how they perform on really simple one-shot tasks. But for day-to-day -day coding workflows, this simply does not work. You need project management, and that's what this framework gives to any AI coding agent that you're using. So as far as the content of the PRD, it's not super complicated, but it's got the basic outline, the scaffolding for your project. It's got you know an executive summary on what the app is, product vision, target users, core features, any technical requirements and suggestions that Claude Code makes about frameworks to use for the front and back end, the design system, the landing page, the chat interface. It also has metrics on what done or success might look like as far as building the app, as well as some suggested development phases and timeframes to build certain features or components of the app. So once you generate a PRD, what is the next step? You actually don't put the PRD into your coding project or give it to Claude Code or any other coding agent. What you're gonna do is distill that PRD into a format or memory system that that agent understands. So if you're using Claude code, you're gonna distill down the PRD into a Claude.md file. If you're using GPT-5 codex, that will be agents.md. Or if you're using Gemini CLI, that will be Gemini.md. But the concept is still the same. These are the memory systems for these particular agents. And the PRD itself will be distilled down into the components and information that that agent will understand best. So you can see I'm in cursor here. This is an example of a Claude.md file that I went over in part one of this video series. And I went over why you need to keep these files relatively short. Because these are the memory systems for the coding agent, they're going to be appended to the prompts that you're interacting with in these coding agents. You don't want it to eat up all your context. So the goal is to keep these files super lean. Oftentimes the PRDs that Claude spits out or that the AI assistant you're using spits out are gonna be way too long, way too verbose and detailed to put into the coding agent. So you can see in this case, this particular Claude.md file only has 62 lines of text. So how do you make the Claude.md file using the PRD? I recommend using this simple prompt. I'm using Opus 4.1 to generate this, but basically I'm just asking it to distill the PRD into a Claude.md file. And I'm giving an example of a Claude.md file I like. Now don't worry, this Claude.md file, as well as the one we're generating from this prompt, they're both going to be in a GitHub repo that I am uploading as part of this video series. The link is down in the show notes. You can check that out, download it, copy it, steal it, whatever. I want you guys to use this and get the most value you can out of it. Now, as you can see, I have copied the output that Claude gave us and put it into the GitHub repo. This is the Claude.md file that it's generated for the Productivity Coach app based on the PRD. And you can see it's about, you know, double the size of the example I gave it, but it really is just the essential stuff, right? We don't want a lot of junk in here. We don't want a 
lot of excess detail that was in the PRD. We just want the essential memories that your coding agent is going to use. Okay, now that we have our project requirements, the essential requirements baked into Claw.md, we're actually not done yet. We have to create two files that will actually execute on the project plan, and that is the planning.md and task.md files. These two files complete this framework, which is again, super simple, but super powerful. These are the files that will actually execute the plan you've created. So planning.md, what that basically is, is a collection of your project's vision, architecture, technology stack, and any required tools that we're, you're using. So we have the sort of basic essential bare bones requirements in Claude.md, but planning.md will have a more full fleshed out version of all this. It's going to be a lot lengthier, but it's going to have a lot of important context on your app. So planning.md is essentially a roadmap of your project and tasks.md is actually a list of all the discrete bite-sized tactical items that your agent has to execute on and do in order to build the app. So these are usually organized into sprints or milestones and you create these files in the same way that you create claude.md. You simply ask Claude or whatever chat agent you're working with to create a planning.md and tasks.md file based on the files you've already created. And here's the prompt I use to do that. Feel free to copy this and try it for yourself. I find it usually works pretty well for me. And here's the planning.md file that it came up with. You can see it's got a lot more detail in here than the claw.md file. You can see it's got a lot more granularity, a lot more details about tech stack and architecture and other things that we're using. And here's the task.md file. You can see it's created about a hundred different individual tasks that it's organized into sprints or phases that it can then tick through and cross off when it completes each of those. So before we draw all three of these files into our coding project and get started there's something really important we need to do to make sure all these files work together and that is to put this into your claw.md file always read planning.md at the start of a new conversation to understand the app's architecture goals tech stack and constraints check task.md before starting work if the task isn't listed add it with a brief description and today's date mark completed tasks in task.md immediately after fully completing them and add any new tasks to task.md now don't worry all of this is in the example claw.md file File that I'm putting in the GitHub repo, so you can just copy this. But in order for all these files to work together, for the project framework to work, this has to be in the claw.md file. Now, once you have your claw.md file set up with that content, or your agents.md file, gemini.md, whatever you're using, just copy and paste that with your planning and task files into your project root directory. And literally, the only thing you need to do to get started is to enter this prompt into your coding agent. And what it will do is it will work through each next available task. If it finds something new, it'll insert that into the task list. And if it completes something, it will cross it off so your agent knows where to start next. And I recommend clearing context quite frequently. And if you need to re-onboard the agent, just onboarding it with the most essential facts. You don't need to append planning.md to every single prompt, but if there's a portion of it that's really important to planning a certain feature, you can tell Claude Code or whatever coding agent you're using to consult that. So you might be wondering how far can you take this framework? How far can you go with this? You can actually go pretty far. You can build some pretty cool stuff with this. And I think this is a great simple and powerful framework to use for any coding agent to take your idea and turn it into an app. Now, there are two common issues, and these are common questions that I get about this framework. And number one is what happens if the code base gets super large or complicated, right? If you have a claw.md file or planning.md, task.md, what happens when these files get enormous, hard to manage? You're trying to manage thousands of lines of code. How do you adapt this framework? There's a couple ways you can do that. Probably the simplest way builds on something I I previewed in the previous video or part one of this series, which is to use claw.md files in subdirectories, right? Instead of having one massive claw.md file, you can have one for your backend, front end documentation and other things like that. And you can do the same thing for planning and tasks. So you can have planning and task files for each individual component or sub part of your app. So you don't have a bunch of context loaded into one single file. You can break it apart. And this is how you can manage larger code bases with this framework and do it more effectively without burning content and managing context a lot better. But I'm going to show you one additional way I found to take the task management system to an entirely new level. And when your code base gets large and complicated, I think this is a great solution to manage your tasks in your project. And that is to use Linear. I think Linear is an awesome project management solution. They are not sponsoring this. But I just really happen to like them. They have a really generous free tier that you can use to manage your projects. And I'm going to show you how to set it up and connect it to your coding agent. So Linear actually has an MCP server. Once you sign up for a free account, you can just simply copy and paste this into Claude code and they have some additional instructions on how to set it up in other coding agents. But if you're going to do it in Claude code, you 
you simply copy this to your keyboard, open up a new terminal and paste it in, and it will run you through an authentication flow so that you can log into your account. It really is super simple and takes like two minutes to set up. So once you do that, if you launch Claude in whatever code base you're working on, you can see the linear MCP now shows up. So this is a real code base that I've been working on for over a year now, and you can see it has a ton of stuff. It has a bunch of nested files and subdirectories. It has a lot of different moving parts and components. And to be honest, the Claude.md file, the planning, the tasks, everything was just getting too unwieldy to manage. And so I decided to migrate everything over to linear and doing that is super, super simple. Literally all I had to do was enter this prompt right here, which is to use the linear MCP server to migrate all tasks. You know, doesn't matter if it's completed in progress or future, everything we've worked on from tasks.md in any useful context from planning.md and claude.md. Now I've also been using some sub agents and custom commands. I have a future video that I'm planning to make on how to build those into your workflow and the specific agents and commands that I've been using. And some of that has helped create additional context around the software development lifecycle for this app. And I also loaded that into the linear MCP, but it is not very hard to migrate these tasks. And you can see once it's done executing that, it created this super clean list of open and pending tasks that I have for this app. And each one has so much detail, so much useful detail and context. And none of this is stored in Claude code, right? This is a external repository on linear where all this context gets stored. So you can just sort of pull what you need using the MCP rather than crowding out the context that Claude code needs or whatever agent that you're using needs. This helps preserve context and manage context so that you're only working and interacting with the information you need for that discrete issue or task that you need to do next. And if you migrate all those issues over to linear, then in order to do sort of the framework I'm talking about, you have to change the prompting a little bit. But again, it's super simple. This is the prompt that I use just to plan the next available task in linear using the MCP and also to create a local.md file just to store any useful context as you work through the task. That way, anything that the, the Claude code agent or whatever coding agent you're using, whatever it learns, you can then offload that context from the MD file. You can send that back to linear so that it logs all the progress and any issues or problems that you run into, it can put that into linear. And that's how you'll keep up with the task management system. This brings us to our second question or issue, and that is what happens if your code base already exists? What if you're trying to implement this framework sort of midway? You already have some code written, maybe you're halfway through your project, you're coming in right in the middle rather than the beginning. So there are a couple ways to deal with this, but I think this is probably the best way to do it. Now you probably have some sort of requirements documentation or some documentation that you use to create or get your app going, get it midway through in the first place. I recommend collecting that and having it ready. But basically what you wanna do is in Claude code or whatever coding agent you're using, you wanna make sure to set the model to something that has a really high context window because you wanna be able to analyze your entire code base. So if you're using Claude code and you have access to the Sonnet 1 million token model, go ahead and use that. I don't currently have access to that even though I'm on the max plan. So if you're in that boat, I recommend using Gemini CLI, which is free. I have a previous video on how to set this up and use it if you want to check that out, but super easy to set up and download. And whatever you use to analyze your code base, I recommend using this prompt here. To analyze this code base, understand project structure, architecture, technology stack, and required tools, and then tag those files that you were saving that we just talked about and generate a detailed PRD for this project. And then also to create a separate status.md file that just details all the work completed to date and any new or future milestones sprints left to complete. Now, whatever output you get from that, I recommend just asking it to produce a task.md and planning.md file from that. And you can use the prompts that I talked about earlier, whether you're working in Claude, ChatGPT, or whether you wanna keep working in Gemini. Again, if you're starting in the middle, things are gonna be a little bit different, but this should help you at least get started using this framework if you want to implement it in the middle of your project. All right, there you have it. I started off this series with a focus on Claude code, but I realized that you can basically use these tips in any AI coding agent, even if you're using GPT-5 codecs, Gemini, or something else. And that's especially true for the framework we discussed today. You can plug this into any AI coding agent and run with it. I plan to release a few more videos in this series, including an updated breakdown of the best MCP servers to plug into your coding agent, how to spin up multiple agents and sub-agents, and much more. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.